Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Danny and Derek. They are from Edinburgh in Scotland, in the UK. So let's see what they have to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so how are you doing today? Yeah, good. Uh, this was a normal work day. He was off. I was off today, being very lazy, so... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. it's, good to be, it's good to be off on Monday, isn't it? Uh, of course it is, yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I believe that Derek is on the right, on the left, and uh, yeah. Danny. Danny. Yeah. So tell me where are you guys from? Edinburgh. Well, we, live, we live in Edinburgh. We're not, obviously, I'm not from Edinburgh. Aren't you? You'll use Do I sound like I'm from Edinburgh? <laughs> <laughs> right, so tell me where you're from, Danny. Huh? <laughs> where are you from? Uh, south of England, Portsmouth. But oh. oh, but you know, I was I was born in Holland, then I grew up in Brunei, in Malaysia, so all over the place. He's more interesting than he seems. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! So you're born in Holland? Yeah, in Maidenblick in the north. Okay, and um, why they move from from Holland to to England? My parents worked. So my father built boats, and um, he moved when he was sixteen with my mum to to Holland and worked had two two kids and then a new job making boats in brunei which is lots of money there tax-free um so i lived in a kind of english american compound for quite a few years as a kid so kind of very, okay. very locked in and yeah you'll let out eventually but that's out eventually yeah <laughs> also your parents they are english it's just it's my, just... my father's scottish and my mum's english yeah i see how about you derek so you're originally from Edinburgh, born and raised no, um, I grew up all over Scotland, so a bit non-town specific, but uh, mostly the Highlands, actually. Wow. And why you guys live in Edinburgh? What's the connection with the, the city? It's an old touch. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my father is obviously living in Scotland, so um, that's my connection. My parents, my mum my lives abroad in Spain. Sister yeah. lives in Australia, so... Um, wow. Yeah, I've 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 <laughs> good places to visit, but yeah, no, I thought I'd uh, check out Scotland. See what the fuss is about. Then he checked out me. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, and what do you do for living, for work? Um, I work with young people who are maybe a little bit removed from work or training or need a bit of a hand getting out of school into um, whatever they want to do. So sometimes you can be a bit of social. So working with a lot of refugee and asylum young people just now who we call New Scots. Um, you tell them break isolation and barriers and hopefully get involved in but at their own pace and making sure it's appropriate to them and their particular needs and interests. I see. But do you work with um, kids different ages? Um, mostly it's like 16 to roughly 25-ish. It just depends because sometimes there's additional support needs we kind of don't pay too much attention to ages as such. It's just you have to be 16 plus for things like insurance and all that kind of thing that's not very interesting to talk about. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Danny? What do you do for work? So I work in property management. So I have a, I run a student accommodation. So I have 251 international students studying in Edinburgh. So yeah. Wow. Lots wow. Of Lots of parties and microwaves thrown out windows, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Actually, I had um, I had uh, last year on the show um, American, a lovely man, American. He he was studying Edinburgh actually for to be a um, uh, actually just graduate. I think this last end of the year, this year, I mean this year, no, but the end of the last year, he was from um, somewhere in the US, okay. and he was in Edinburgh for I think four years already. He was doing his. I mean, um, yeah. I Edinburgh is probably one of the top 10 universities in the world, so it's a very, it's a huge um, student. Yeah, yeah, he said there's a lot of students, too. yeah, and, and he was doing the, his um, degree in to become, um, um, I got to look after the, the animals, a veterinarian. Oh, yeah. veterinarian. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So before we start our journey, we in the magic box. Um, Derek, would you like to tell me something interesting about Danny? He has nice eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Something interesting about oh, God. Daddy, it. Oh, God. <laughs> Daddy is very creative and practical. He likes making things out of clay. Um, I don't want to be keen because he got me interested in things like concrete, which I didn't know anything about. So, like, if you really like somebody, you get interested in their interests a little bit, even if it's concrete. <laughs> 
but then I actually studied classics for a little while. So we started like, looking at these things about um, how cement was invented and all the different things that led to in civilization. And um, so we kind of found a crossed interest a little bit there. I think his interest of mine was not as appealing as my interest in his, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose that's something I find interesting because I'm not a very creative person in terms of being able to envision what things look like or put things together that well. I only realised it didn't go very well when I've already done it. Um, so that's something I find attractive and nice about Danny that he's very creative and can see the whole picture and see what it's going to look like before mm -hmm. it happens. Do I agree with that, Danny? Well, yeah, no, I am very creative. I do, I do make a lot of stuff. I'm always potting around and upcycling something, or you know, making something, or painting something. So, yeah. how about if I ask you to tell me something interesting about Derek? What would you say? Uh, well, you probably look at most people look at him and wonder if he's actually Scottish. So yes, he is half Scottish, and his dad's Hebrew. So he's got a right mix of sort of um, Catholic and um, wow. Jewish, I suppose. Amazing. Yeah, it's a point, yeah. It's a delightful half half. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's like, the way you're really from. He's like, Scotland, yeah. the way you're really from. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right, are you guys ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome to William the Magic Box. This is my best Hi, friend, man. okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to relax a little bit before the first question. Okay, let's do it. Right, before we start the game, through the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, okay, I always can change, okay? Good. Danny, I'm gonna ask you to be a bit more close central. Yes, you can see both. Yeah, amazing. Now I can are you comfortable? It's okay? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's start now. First, let's go with Derek. The first question. Derek, tell me what is your favorite kitchen smell? Um is he in it? <laughs> <laughs> um anything I'm cooking normally. <laughs> yeah, and um, that is very good at cooking, so normally speaking something nice in the kitchen. If I'm in the kitchen, it'll only smell of maybe toast. So not that great at cooking. So luckily that is very good at cooking and often there's nice smells coming from the kitchen. I mean, the only downfall is I have to always cook. Um you don't have to, it's just if you want to eat something good, you might want to. Edible, yeah. <laughs> and what's what Danny cooks that you like the most? Well, because he grew up in Brunei, he's really keen on making Asian dishes and things. And then when we try to get fit and healthy, it's really good because it's just rice and meat and veg. So that's a gym diet there. A lot, so. a lot of clean food, a lot of clean Asian food. For me, it's very quick, quick and easy. Um, wow. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, we just ate a pack of donuts. Yeah, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's not all good news. It's like a day, it's fun. Yeah, well, some days not a cheap day. Okay, Danny, let's go with you now. Danny, if, um, who would you swap lives for a day if you could? Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Does it have to be like a real person? No, it could be anyone. A, a superhero, probably. Tell me which one. Yeah, anyone, any from anyone from the DC or Marvel. I'm very into uh, superhero program. Maybe Shazam. Shazam's quite cool. Yeah. Superhero. Which one? Shazam. Oh, Shazam! Yes. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like him. Um, but yeah, no, anything from Marvel. Um, yeah, we like Witches as well. Yeah, I'm really into Witches. There's so many Witch TV programs. Yeah. <laughs> do you um, like Do you like the X Men movies? Love the X Men. I grew up in the X Men. Oh my uh, god. When that theme tune starts, that reminds me of being a child. At the end of Ms. Marvel. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And you get jumped in. <laughs> I, mean, I, grew, I grew up in the cartoon and then obviously the films as well. So I'm excited about the new introduction to X Men again. So yeah, love anything superhero. Yeah, I'm in. There was, I went to see the last one on the cinema. This is one called Black, Black Adam. Well, what did you think of it? I loved it. Yeah, did I think it, it gave you exactly what you I, needed. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I had a doubt before going to see, yeah. I was like, I'm not sure it's going to be good, but actually it, I was, it was so fun. entertaining. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. I loved it. Oh, Very yeah. good. It was kind of cool. It was nice to be fun and carry something. You know, if you've had a hard day, like you don't want to just right. something silly, like you don't want to wear something really heavy or tax. And you're like, yeah, so but if I was going to choose one, it's not even a male, it'd be Scarlet Witch, I suppose, because she's pretty. Yeah. 
absolutely. And a little bit evil as well, so, you know, which one was the... <laughs> <laughs> Next question, let's do it. Okay, Danny, let's start with you now. Tell me, what do you think people need to know about each other before they get married? Well, uh, everything, probably. <laughs> um, I don't know. I suppose for us, we, when we've ever spoken about that sort of stuff, is trying to have, you know, making sure you know the same direction you want to go in. Go uh -huh. um, it's all well and good being in love, and love's amazing, but if you don't really have the same direction or path, it's not always going <laughs> to end well. So I think it's always a, to have a, a clear picture of, you know, where we want our lives to go. And I think we're quite lucky that, you know, we have similar interests and and we're quite relaxed in the sense of we don't really mind if we're rich or poor. Rich would be perfect, but um, <laughs> but or where we end up or what country we're in, as long as, you know, as long as we're together and we're happy and we're doing things that interest us and stimulate us, then, yeah. And in your opinion, Danny, what do you think, how do you think that this is the gay life handy bird? Do you think... Um, gay couples they they um it's 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 a, you do see a lot of gay couples in in Edinburgh do you think it's oh, it's good to um it's easy to maintain a relationship what, what's your understanding I mean, Edinburgh, I mean Scotland in general and Edinburgh is very gay friendly I mean mm -hmm. we can quite comfortably walk around uh hand in hand in the streets um and that's that's slightly different to even in in, in England <laughs> even in England um it's really open, really free. Um, it's a bit dull, let's say, in Edinburgh. There's not much of a gay scene, like mm -hmm. anywhere in the UK. Really. There's not, there's not huge gay scenes anymore. Um, but it's very, it's very comfortable to live as a gay person in, in Edinburgh, yeah. or in Scotland in general, completely. Uh, but there's not a lot going on. That's the only thing. But to be fair, it's, it's very similar for straight people in Edinburgh. It's just not a nighttime nightclub type of city. It's a tourist city, so people come to visit. Yeah. They take their pictures. Um, that's it, really. It's not really. To live, to live, it's, it's it's like a mini London. I see. Okay. So without all the clubs and the interesting things to go and see. So, <laughs> you know, twenty years ago, Edinburgh was really cool, but we've got a really strict licensing authority now. They don't seem to have alleviated the lockdown laws. One noise complaint can shut down a whole venue. Wow. So yeah. it's really strict, and it's well, if you're moving into an area, I don't really think you should be able to. Mm -hmm. Adjust it to your needs that way. And it's still a nighttime economy, it's still people's jobs, and some of us live in town because we want the two places to go. Mm. I see. Okay, Derek, with you now. Share with us a crazy or funny story that happened to you when you were a child at school. Oh, when I was a child at school. Well, hold on, give me a wee second. Hold on, give me a wee I think quite a few have, but I might have blocked <laughs> yeah, probably with you. Yeah. Was it, um... Oh, I know. Neil Armstrong came to see us. Sorry? Neil Armstrong came to visit us at school. The astronaut. So, and obviously when you're like, I, I can't, maybe I was like seven, I think. I was living in the Highlands. So I think he has like a Scottish background or something. Because we were around a lot of schools at the time talking about what it was like to be a spaceman. So obviously it's got, grabbed your attention when you're maybe seven. Um, and he spoke all the way. I must have got to ask him questions. Was that the school, time. the neighbour base? Yes, yeah, so where I went to school up in the Highlands was a lot of American people because at the time we were at the Cold War with Russia, so it was like an American naval base was nearby and the school was set up there. So I can't, obviously, because I was so young, I don't remember how it came about to be. But um, yeah, that was something interesting that happened. I got to meet Neil Armstrong. Did you like school as a child? I like the social aspect of school. <laughs> I liked having fun with my friends and having a good time and getting around. Um, and I liked some classes more than others. I think I was one of those kids that the teachers liked or didn't because I was either interested or I wasn't um, and I had things I was good at and things I definitely wasn't that I didn't really persevere with. So. I mean Derek's one of the people that he's um, quite intelligent but so you can leave things to the last minute and still pass so yeah they can mess around obviously in school but then you'd always do well in you know in the exam what point of it so. Yeah well even as a uni you know if I put lots of time and preparation that's when I got my worst marks my best marks were always the essays I wrote the day before <laughs> on the like Jessica Fletcher and like oh <laughs> those were always the ones that went best so very good yeah how you got so good at this oh, it's just love <laughs> <laughs> it's my charm next, now next one let's do it 
<laughs> right, before the next question, uh, Derek, tell me how did you guys meet up? Well, the first time we saw each other was in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of tripped over myself looking at the offers and um, I know nothing really happened. Like we kind of said hello online, we had like a friend in common, but nothing came about from it. And then we just happened to be at a New Year party where I had a friend in common. I was like, that's that guy from the supermarket. And that was it. Wow. <laughs> that was, like, was probably like six months in between. Yeah, so we, we saw each other in, in the supermarket and then six months later that, that New Year's we saw in a party. And then we moved in together after five days. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. At the beginning of the pandemic. So we had no choice really, to be honest. It was either all the way But we only it. lived kind of parallel roads, funny enough. Oh, the yeah. whole time we lived like literally the next road, but yeah. we never saw each other. So if it had not worked out, you just go home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Kind of well, I might not see you again for a few months. So you could be like my lockdown bug and things just getting rid of you. Danny, and in your opinion, who, does, who fall in love first? I mean, not in that, I mean, he'll tell you this funny story because he, he keeps threatening to tell us if we ever get married, that would be the, the speech. Well, you funny tell story. a little funny story. Basically, he said it was quite early in. I mean, we were talking like a few weeks in and he kind of turned to me and yes. said, I love you. And I said, oh, but I, said, I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been holding it in for a few like. I mean, I was, I, I had a kind of like a weird infatuation, even from the point of seeing him in the, um, the supermarket. But yeah. I'm not sure saying thank you was the best reply because I'll never live it down now, so. Yeah, but at the same time, you said you don't want to just say it because you said it. You're true, I, don't, I hate that, you know, I feel like I need to say it because you said it first, you know, so I just said thank you, and I think I probably said it a few weeks later. <laughs> thank you, very <laughs> <precious. laughs> Who gave the first step when you met? Who gave? Who was the one who kind of approached each other? Oh, definitely me. Oh, yeah. Yeah? He's not shy. No, at all. <laughs> <laughs> I I if I like somebody that don't like me, that would be okay. I don't mind. But you have to kind of swing and try. <laughs> All right. For you now, Derek, let's start with you now. What is the weirdest food combination have you ever tried? Um, anything my grandmother makes. It's, it's a little bit strange. <laughs> and so your mother. <laughs> I'm a mum. <it's, laughs> my mum's kind of famed for trying hard, but never really quite landing. Like, so a couple of times it's been okay, but more often than not, it's a swing and a miss. Um, she is just, a, I don't know, she, I think she has this uh, idea of using things that are there, but they don't necessarily match. I had some boiled chicken and sliced banana at my grandmother's house once. <laughs> it was just boiled chicken with sliced banana. Um, but my mom has a range of funny trying to make food stories. And it's yeah. really, and she doesn't make anything complicated. It's not like anything she's trying it. I mean, it's just basic. When they run out of things, they substitute it with things that don't go. So... That's normally the issue. Yeah, I mean, I hear touch you up. It's not like this and that. I can't, I'm going to say about that. Cool. I've eaten today, I'm fine. <laughs> and you have siblings as well, Derek, or are you are the only child? Sorry? Do you have uh, siblings as well? Yes, yeah, so um, my mum had five kids and then my dad had another three, but we didn't all grow up together. And we had a lot of half brothers and sisters. I see. All, all right. right. <laughs> Danny, for you now. How how would your best friend describe yourself? Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know, to be honest. Um, so my best friend Miriam, who lives in London, we used to work together um, back in the days when I used to work in Zara in Oxford Street. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, I mean, she, back in them days, I was quite silly and always up for a laugh. Maybe I'm a little bit too um, relaxed now as I get older. But no, always loyal. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but the first one on the dance floor, the first one to be sick, being drunk. Not so much anymore. I don't really drink anymore, but yes, yeah, I used to be a bit of a party goer back in the day. Yeah, you need to in, I mean, it was in my 20s, so I mean, it was a while ago. Um, but yeah. And your best friend, she still live in London or not? Yeah, she does, yeah. She's, yeah, she's from Italy, but she still lives in London. Um, she was here last Halloween, I think. Um, the one before. Not Halloween before. All right, so we try and see it sometimes, but um, yeah. Very good. Ready for another one? Let's do it. Next one. All right, let's go with you now, Danny. Next question is, if you could have dinner with anyone, living or not, who that would be and why? Oh. 
anyone living all right. <laughs> I eat with you every single day, so. <laughs> Where am I going to be? <laughs> I think, mean, actually, do you know what? Yeah, I think it would be Adele. Not necessarily like I'm really massively into her music. I, I, do, I do think she sings very well. But mm -hmm. like her personality wise, I think she is spot on. Um, but even better would be would be Adele and Adam Carr together, and it would be, would be amazing just for the the comedy side of it. And um, they really don't so, care what they say or how they say it. So they're very, so, they're very so open. You are sitting the same table with both of them. What would be your first question to Adele and your first question to Alan Carr? Have you seen Derek? Have you seen my husband? He's missing. <laughs> Every human. Um, Oh god, I don't even know. Like, I'll probably ask them to how they actually became friends because it's quite an unlikely uh, connection they have. You know, Adele being a singer from London and and Alan Carr being a comedian, but they're like the best of friends and they have the most unlikely friendship. Um, so I'd probably ask them the, the story of the night they met. Probably. I see. Okay, Derek, for you now. What's what? Oh, this one is already talk about school, so I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. change. I'm already talk about that. Next question for you is. <laughs> If you could be in somebody's place for 24 hours, who that would be and why? Oh, <laughs> I'm definitely one of the MPs that give funding to community projects because I would just let loose and write lots of checks. So, and I could <laughs> take out all the bursary, all the different funds they've gotten to sort for themselves. So, yeah. so then they come back the next day and all the money's gone, but it's gone somewhere good. <laughs> <laughs> so you love politics. You like politics? Oh, I don't like politics at all, but I really care about the communities and different young people that I work with. And I mm -hmm. see the um, cost of the funding restrictions and austerity to the different projects that we're involved with and, and the impact it has on different community groups and different projects. Um, and I think our government's way of spending money is at best not the worst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No. I've seen a five-year-old spend money better than the government, so... Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. Let's do it. Derek, before the next one, tell me what's the most challenging part of your job, in your opinion? Um, the real humans that you work with, the, the real people with individual stories and try to work with them to make sure that they access um, whatever it is they need and it can just be something social it could just be there's value in a young person who's isolated and only just being able to come for a drink of juice and talk and there being no pressure to achieve something or some qualification or training course and unfortunately a lot of funding objectives are attached to hard outcomes like that where you can demonstrate there's been some sort of return on investment but you're kind of jumping ahead because if you're I know, for example, someone with refugee status housed in accommodation and you've been isolated and lonely and face war trauma, it's enough that you might just want to come and have a drink of juice and a chat and make some friends. Because if you're not able to get out of the accommodation or make any friends, you're not very employable anyway. Um, but that might not be the hard out, that might not be what they're looking for. You know, it just depends on the, each person. But sometimes you obviously you're working with young people who have got really awful stories and it hits you sometimes when you come home. Um, because that work is kind of good more than you do all the things you need to do. But sometimes you get home and rest and think about it, it, it can edge harder then. Try not to How about your... every person. I see. How about yours, Danny? What's the most challenging part of your job? Um, I suppose uh, uh, normally a lot of this was just the communication. So I have a lot of um, students from China. So there's always a huge mm -hmm. language barrier. So. I suppose the, the most challenging point is like trying to communicate in a way that they understand. And um, it's normally nothing that, that serious, but we do do a lot of welfare. These students are away from their parents for four years, you know, so um, probably the most challenging part would be communications and then the welfare side of things when people, you know, they can become quite depressed um, or they've come over here and they're transitioning from um, boy to a girl, vice versa, and the parents don't know, and this is the point where they've been comfortable to do it. So, yeah, I deal with a lot of cases like that. So it's probably the most difficult part of the job. All right. Derek, let's start with you now. If you could stay any age for the rest of your life, what age that would be and why? Ooh, that's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good question. <laughs> 
Oh, I was choking on my answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually quite like the age I am now, um, to be honest. Um, I feel like I've peaked <laughs> somewhat, so it's probably going to go downhill now. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like you've got enough together in life. You know what you want out of life still. Um, but yeah, I feel quite sad. I, I quite like I being in my twenties again. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in my twenties again because everyone always says those are the best years of your life. Yeah. I had a way better time in my thirties, and as I approach forty this year, going to be forty is good as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, aging for you, Derek, something that bothers you, or it's just numbers? No, I don't, I'm actually not bothered with getting old at all. You some people lie about their age or try and pretend that they're not getting, I kind of like being my age, I don't know, it doesn't bother me, it's not something that affects or bothers me, maybe I'll feel different when I'm 50 or 60, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay with 40, so. Okay. Good. Danny, for you now, right, that's my favorite question of the match box, came up for really? you. I bet I, bet, I, bet, I, I gave it to I bet I stumbled, I bet I stumbled yeah. <laughs> Right, send away a message to someone, but you don't need to tell who this message is for. So I send a message to someone and they don't know what the message is, but they know. Yeah, no. Someone. Yeah, you send a message to someone, but you don't need to tell their names or who this message is for. Just the person who is watching the interview right now will know. Okay, this message was for me. Oh, that's a good. <laughs> oh, okay. I suppose I mean, this has gone back a long time. There's some old friends from when I was, you know, from 17 to to like 20, 20 ish, I suppose. Um, but if I say Godomink, um, welcome to Godomink, a person, basically I, I have a friend from my hometown in Portsmouth who's a drag queen and every time we used to go to the Pride in Brighton Pride, we used uh -huh. to get on the train, I mean the train was like packed from ceiling to the floor, drag queens and, and gays everywhere, and every time we went past a town called Godomink, because it was a funny word in the funny town, he would get yeah. up at the table and say, welcome to Godomink. Um, and it used to sort of set off the carriage, but yeah, so my, my friend would know that. Okay, Not good sure. one. And how was growing up as a gay boy? Did you have the support of your family? I mean, I didn't come out until I was about 25 to family, but my, my, my parents are amazing. Both my father and my mother, um, they said they kind of knew for a while before I told them, um, but I've never had any, <laughs> any issues with my parents. They've They've been super cool with the whole, the whole thing. It's just been quite natural, a natural, natural transition between pretending to be straight and you know coming out as gay to the family. Yeah. And for you, Derek, was the same? <laughs> <laughs> for you, Derek, was the same or slightly different? I didn't come out. I just always was gay. <laughs> this one, since the kid. Yeah, I mean they, they knew straight away. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, a gay couple used to babysit me in the eighties. My mom was always friends with varied folk. It was never a um, big deal or a bother. I went to a convent school. Yeah, <laughs> the nuns. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Next question. Let's do it. Okay, for the next question, um, Derek, tell me between both of you, who is the one who always sleep, falls asleep first? I would take turns. I would take turns. <laughs> yeah. yeah, normally we put something on TV and one of us doesn't make it to the end of the programme or the film or whatever we're watching. I think I'm probably more the person that loves a good sleep. Yeah. Um, but he's very good at doing like an afternoon nap. Yeah. His whole family are the same. They always have an afternoon nap yeah, at some point. Cup an hour before we do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying you love, you love an afternoon nap. I do. I do like a snooze if I can squeeze one in. Yeah. But that's very good for you. But we fell asleep so hard we got burgled when we were sitting in the house. True. True. Oh. Someone actually buried us while we were asleep. And we didn't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, tell me uh, what's the biggest difference between both of you? I think it's like we're we're actually complete opposites in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, Derek's more academia, I'm more creative. Um, I like cooking. Derek not so much. Um, but it's, I think there's huge difference. Even even to look at us. I mean, you know, I'm blonde and grey. He's dark and grey. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, we are completely different actually in nearly every way. And the, and the biggest similarity. The biggest similarity there is. 
Yeah, of course, we love our families. And like we have the same, yeah. we definitely have the same humor and references. And it's growing up because we're the same, pretty much the same age, so we have a lot of the same references. Yeah, boys very much the same humor, and we love the outdoors. We go camping like yeah. as much as we can possibly go wild camping. Yeah, he'd live in a tent. He makes it. I would live in a tent. House. It's all nice. It's room. true. I do have a kitchen and a front room, <laughs> and a bed, double bed, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, but we love we love being out in nature and exploring and. All that sort of stuff. Yeah, we do have the same objectives in life, even though maybe our approaches are slightly different. But... Yeah. I saw the pictures. Actually, I was checking your profile a bit, and I could see so many pictures of you guys spending time in, you know, nature on the beach. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then we like a night out sometimes. It's not like we never do anything else, but it's like, I think that's what's good about living in there. It's really easy to go to the islands and mm -hmm. jump in the car once we get the car back. Yeah. We have trouble with the car. So, <laughs> and all these kind of things, though, like what we like doing, what we like doing in life is very similar. Yeah. Maybe our personalities and our looks are quite different. Maybe that's the best way to put it. Mm. All right, Danny, with you now. Tell us, um, oh, this one is about school again. I'm going to change. I'm going to about sure. school. Right, Danny. <laughs> oh, look at that. If you were in a circus, yeah, which character would you like to be and why? And what, sorry? If you were in a circus, which character a would you circus? like to be and why? Um, I think the acrobatics, like, you know, the ones that swing on the ropes and they spin around. Um, I think you'd look great on a trapeze. I would. <laughs> and I look great in the colours, you know, red and golds and yellows. Like, no. <laughs> um, no, I do like, I'm a, not so much, I'm getting worse, getting older, but I used to be really into like adrenaline and stuff. So any kind of adrenaline sports. Um, it's because you lose your equilibrium. Yeah. You roller coasters, even. <laughs> well, I love a roller coaster, but no, I think That's definitely the acrobatics <laughs> would be uh, something I would, if I was going to be in the circus. He'd probably be the clown more, but yeah. Or the one with the what? <laughs> <laughs> Derek, with you now. Um, what is the first thing that you think about when you wake up? Um, the kettle and the toaster. <laughs> you're already there and I need to think about you. Are you more a day or night person? Oh, I'm very, well, I like, oh, no, see, because I have my afternoon nap, I'm really cheerful in the morning, but then I like the evenings as well, so I've got that afternoon low. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not very good in the morning. I need an hour in the morning to just to become human again. Whereas Derek is tap dance, tap dancing in front of me and telling me he's <laughs> so yeah, that can be quite challenging in the morning when you're waking up and you've got one eye open. <laughs> I could see that you have some pets as well, <laughs> some dogs and some cats. I could see we have a cat called Basil, um, yeah. and we kind of look after our best friend's dog quite often. So we used to share a flat with my best friend who got a puppy so I ended up sort of being like our dog as well and she goes we, we've her. known it since it was a baby like a puppy and uh, this is one of our other dens which is thinks this is another house of us so yes and her name is Stella um but yeah and Basil and Stella are best friends they're best friends they're always running around the house <laughs> good one three questions left for you let's do it before the next question uh Danny tell me um what do you like the most about living in Edinburgh? What's the best part of the city? Uh, <laughs> um, well, we were actually thinking about moving away. Um, <laughs> it's not like, I mean, very likely thinking about it. just because like, like we spoke about before, it's very much a, a tourist city. Um, but I suppose Edinburgh itself is quite beautiful to look at and uh, the historic side of it. And when it snows, it looks magical. Um, and I suppose the bonus is we are quite close to going to the Highlands for the camping. You know, it's quite easy to get out of a, a main city and go straight out into the country. Um, but yeah, I think it's probably the aesthetic of the city is quite beautiful. It's quite magical. They're like Harry Potter, I suppose. Um, it's just very much tailored towards uh, tourists. <laughs> <laughs> and Derek, tell me, I've never been in Edinburgh before. If I would go for the very first time, tell me what is a must, what I need to see, what is the postcard of Edinburgh? I think the best thing someone could do when they come to Edinburgh is walk around. Because um, you see so much of it just walking around. Because like Danny's saying, it's not a really fast paced, lots of things to do type of city. It's a nice city to visit and see what it looks like. And you kind of amble across different points of interest. And things there's like a history. So you've got like obviously like the Edinburgh Castle. And then, you know, also Edinburgh is built on a volcano, like a 
Yeah. So, and then there's also a city built underneath the city. So there's loads of little quirky things to do, but um, it's definitely not fast paced, but you definitely need to be uh, fit and healthy because it's yeah. literally uphill. And lots of way. cobbles, lots of steps. It took down a while to get used literally, to walking. I was climbing up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving from London, I was like... <laughs> That's why you guys are. That's why you guys are very fit. Well, we tried to. That, be, maybe not the last few weeks uh, since Christmas. But yeah. No, but we, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, twenty three is not going off to a good start. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Derek, for you now, tell me one thing that you you won and how did you win it? Something special. What, something I wanted and achieved. Won, won. Also, no, no, something won. that you won. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, looking at him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it, oh, do you know what happened to me in the festival? I won. Uh, oh, God, yeah. Are you telling me? Uh, when well, we went to a drag show, um, it was kind in of... In the festival. In the festival. We had Edinburgh Festival, which is a lot of uh, comedians and uh, arts and music and stuff. Happens every year. I think it brings in like a million people to the city. Um, we went to a drag show and they were doing like acrobatics and uh, you know the, the big hoop and they were doing the spinning around uh, and then there was a raffle and of course the uh, he took one ticket from the raffle and he won and then wow. he had a drag mother that dragged him up and he had to walk the wrong way and uh, and he won that so he won tickets to another show so yeah, yeah. amazing we have to win, have to win. Have to win. That's, has, that's the most recent thing he has a knack for winning any kind of raffle or you know Ticket yeah, thing like that. I don't know how it's always something that when I end up on stage. <laughs> so Pretty much, yeah. Amazing. Okay, Danny, for you now. Uh, do you have any nicknames? I actually don't have a nickname, no, I never have. Um what are you talking about? Oh, oh okay. Okay, it's both as friends socially, I don't have a nickname, but um Derek calls me Angel. And he actually has since God, nearly like the first couple of weeks, to the point where I don't even, if he was to say Danny, I'd know I'm in trouble or I'm like, what's wrong with you? Um, but yeah, I think people, some people in public might even think my name is Angel because he, I literally respond to it straight away. So yeah. I would refer to him as Danny maybe if I'm talking about him to somebody else. Yeah, but if it, if I hear my name Danny through the through the house, I've done something wrong or someone's upset about something. <laughs> And how do you call Derek? Just Derek or? Derek. Oh, Derek. <laughs> if he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's a different class. It's on a different salon. Yeah. <laughs> no, just Derek. Oh. Oh, Derek. Babe. Darling. Darling. <laughs> Darling. That's my, uh, you know, from the South, you know, we're very much like, all right, how you doing? <laughs> Two questions left for you. Let's do it. Hey, Danny, for you now, what hurt your feelings? What hurt my feelings? Yeah. In, in, what, aspect, in what context? I don't know. Um, like like overall, or life or? Yeah, what makes, yeah, overall, like what, what makes you feel sad or what uh, kind of drugs put you in a, in, a, in a direction that, you know, that you're not feeling well, like overall? I don't know, to be honest. Um, look, Derek, try to think for you. Look, <laughs> I, like think for it's all, I, I have an opinion, but I don't want to answer for you. Oh, God, no, no it's not, there's only one thing in particular. Mm. It's just that maybe like one thing bad happens and then it can infiltrate everything else. It doesn't have to be one thing in particular. Yeah, it's just I can, I can be a bit of a warrior at times. Yeah, really. it can be about nothing and everything. You know, it's one of them things that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's not, there's not something in particular no. that makes you stumble. It's just um, you worry about certain things. Sometimes. Yeah. Do you get the one thing that always upsets me is anything, you know, harm to children or animals or, you know, all these sort of things. So, yeah. That like always the, gets the my back up. No, no, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> always, anything to do with animals, you know, it makes me sad. Yeah. All right. Derek, for you now, what does money mean to you? Um, I would mean, nice. To not have to think about money or to be comfortable, but I'm not a money orientated person. It's like, it'd be nice just not to have to think about it because I don't like it that much. I'm trying to not um, worry about it. So to have money or be more comfortable, of course, that would be nice. And it'd be nice to have enough that you could look after all your friends and family, but um, not necessarily. You're not driven by it. No. Uh, we would like it more, please. <laughs> But um, no, it's not. It's not on the forefront of everything we do. No, it's not an objective to be rich or the status of being rich. It just mm. be nice not to have to 
worry that you don't have enough to do the holiday or enough to do mm -hmm. all the things again to do different costs so especially now okay. Oh, do you believe do you believe that money bring can bring happiness no i think it can bring it can bring opportunities and it can bring experiences but happiness maybe not so much it maybe takes away a worry and a stress that because like, an example of things that can start infiltrating other parts of your life because you can't do the things that you want to do or you um yeah. for example so it'd be nice to just have that taken away i think, that, I think the, the whole bringing like money bringing you happiness it really depends on the person you know Absolutely. I don't think it can solve. We still appreciate that. I think even if we had money, we still appreciate the things that you know makes makes us happy now, even so much then. But like I said, yeah, it'd be nice to not have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you will be bargain hunting. Daddy. I love a bargain. Anything with a yellow stick. Absolutely. <laughs> I, want, I want a discount on everything. Even if I was a millionaire, I want a discount. <laughs> That's funny. Ready for the last one? Yes. Last question. Let's do it. But before the last question, Derek, tell me, you know, those uh, 2020, yeah, the world literally went upside down regarding the COVID crisis, yeah? For you, what is the biggest positive impact that brought to your personal life and also at the same time the most negative one? I think the positive was when we came out of it appreciating what we had before, making the most of it again. I think it was a really good example of like absence making your heart grow fall and you don't see your friends or family to do all the things you wanted to do and you're worried about people so much just reconnect i think was really valuable and kind of appreciating it a little bit more and not taking people or parts of your life for granted as much and i definitely got that more when i came out of it than, a pre than during that makes sense obviously the negative thing was at the same time being separated from all the people that you love and that they're not doing very well sometimes and not being able to be there for them um so it's kind of same thing from the each side um but yeah those are the things i definitely took away from it okay. danny before the last question tell me uh for you we are just starting a new year now 2023 just arrived yeah uh -huh. for you tell me if you could define in one word 2020 for you and also uh um, what's what for you? Do you make do you make like new resolutions for the new year, or your kind of person that live by day? Uh, resolution wise, I mean, they were talking about me being creative, so that, that I definitely got, we're, I want to move more into creating and making stuff, and hopefully selling stuff as well, furniture, art, etc. So that's mm -hmm. definitely the, yeah, it's a great idea. That's definitely my goal, my my drive for this year is to do things that make me happy and. Yeah. In 2022, if you could define the whole year in one word for you. 2022? You... Yeah, just that. If you could define just uh, in one word. I mean, me and Derek obviously moving in together um, just before 2022 and just kind of like building that. It was that. summer 21, wasn't it? 21, yeah. yeah. So 22 was kind of like us building our house because we actually moved in with pretty much nothing, like zero. You know, we came from small flats, both of us. Yeah. Um, so we had to kind of really build everything like fridge, uh, the washing machine, all that sort of stuff. So we spent a kind of year just like really knuckling down and and we'll get building the home together, really. And, and getting back on our feet because I'd gone back to university just before the lockdown, so I spent yeah. all my money on that. Danny wasn't ill. I just moved, I just <laughs> moved here before lockdown, so I didn't really have like the same government like furlough or grants and stuff like a lot of people did. So I spent that 22 was very much trying to get ourselves back on track and build a house, make it look nice, etc. <laughs> That's Good one. Last question for you, Danny. Let's do it. Um, what has been the lowest point of your life? Oh, taking it deep and dark. <laughs> the lowest point. And I suppose talking back um, to when I came out. I suppose I didn't really come out. My mum actually spoke to me about being gay and um, she said the, the thing that really upset her the most is that she felt that I couldn't speak to her about it. But you know, as a, like growing up as a kid in society, you, you always fear for the worst. So you always put that off and you always believe that worst scenario would come true. Um, but yeah, I suppose hearing those words from my mum, like, that she was upset that, you know, I felt like I couldn't speak to her um, was probably the lowest point. But um, we have a great relationship now and she understands more in a sense, mm -hmm. why I kept it a secret, um, but yeah. I see. All right. Last question for you now, Derek. What three things do you want to be remembered for? 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think hopefully that I was um, understanding and caring and um, did my best. I mean, Derek is one of the people who'll do something for anyone, even if, you know, he's busy or anything like that. He always makes sure he finds time for people. So you definitely would be remembered for being there, I suppose. If any, they were still with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, it's not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the word association game. I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? <laughs> So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the button right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Oh, okay, let's start, let's start with Danny. Money. Um, opportunities. Derek, money. Trees. Okay. How about lies, Derek? Love. Danny, lies? Life, Derek. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> one, yeah, one, word. <laughs> one word for um, family, Derek. Um, background. Okay. Family, Danny? Love, unconditional love, I don't know. Okay. Um, and one word for love, Danny. One word for love? Yeah. Um, purpose, I suppose. Derek, love? Forever. <laughs> okay. How about sex, Derek? Violent. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Derek, sex. I mean, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, Danny, sex. Um, connection, I suppose. Me. Okay. Danny, uh, one word for politics. No, thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. Derek, uh, politics. <laughs> okay. Derek, with you now, one word for religion. Um, culture. Danny? I, I mean, I'm an atheist, I'm an atheist, so. Okay. Yeah. Danny, uh, for you now, one word for fear. Um, yeah, nice to be honest, I'm stumped. Fear, one word for fear. Um, I don't know. What was it like to be scared? Horrible. There you go. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. There you go. Okay, Derek, for you, fear. Um, fixation. Okay. Mm. With you again, one, uh, one word for friendship. Uh, camaraderie. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, for you now, friendship. Uh, family. So, yeah, same, okay. same different for me. Again, for you, one word for desire. Desire. Um, I find this game really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Derek again. Uh, okay, uh, Derek, desire. So long, you're like free from this. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Say again, it's a good song. It's a song for, from Desiree. Yeah. Free mm. from this life. I can't <laughs> say she will recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, regrets, mistakes, Danny, time like lost time. Okay, for you again, success. Um. Uh, success. The goal, I suppose. Derek. Goal. Individual. Mm, interesting. Wish, Derek, one word. Pennies. Danny? <laughs> Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did a joke. Uh -huh. Oh, babe, that was the best joke you've ever told in your whole life. Yeah, <laughs> Danny, for you now, uh, happiness, one word. Fulfillment. Derek? Um, found. Okay. One word for Edinburgh for you, Derek. 
pretty. Danny? Uh, language. Because as an English person, like, it's completely different language, so. Okay, Danny, with you again, one word for Scotland. <laughs> um, beautiful. Derek? Roots. Hmm. Derek, define uh, Danny in one positive and one negative word. <laughs> positive. Um, I suppose two is like a kind soul. Okay. And negative? Um, pernickety. Say again? Pernickety. <laughs> You're almost a bit fussy on things sometimes. <laughs> Danny, tell me what's the most beautiful thing about Derek? Um, his smile, but also his heart. You know, he's very caring. Um, so, yeah. And what's something that he still needs to work on to improve on? <laughs> Picking up his stuff from the floor, <laughs> uh, from the bathroom, uh, from the hallway, from the bedroom floor. <laughs> Do you see some work in progress? No. I, yeah, I can't really make a case for myself. It's no, true. it's like a when children come in, it's like coat on the floor, bag over the wall, and it's like that. Very funny. Okay, let's play now. Derek and Danny and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. Okay, Derek, as we, we were in touch before we start the conversation, like uh, we're the first person who I contact. So tell me, you can ask me a question. You can go first. Okay, when are you coming to Edinburgh? I love the question, I love the question. And okay, my answer will be, um, when I, I get an invitation, like an official invitation will come. Sounds great, but sure to let us know when you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you can ask me a question now. Um, what brought you to the UK? Right, um, as a, back in Brazil, as uh -huh. a... As a child, uh, when I was 11 years old, I started studying English and I fell in love with the language. Yeah. And since then, I always want, I had a dream. I always wanted to live in a country where I could speak English every single day. Oh, wow. So back in Brazil, um, we, we, our tendency, South America, we have this dream of going to the US, like uh, America yeah. dream. Yeah, all of us have the thing. We just think about USA. Uh, long story short, I had the opportunity to uh, to go to Portugal, and uh, from Portugal, uh, when I was 19 years old, and uh, I said, okay, from Portugal I can go to Ireland or I can go to to England, and London came along, and I've been in London for 17 years now, and London is home, and I must say, I live a dream because I speak English every single day. Hey, <laughs> uh, congratulations, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, London is being home now. It's uh, it's funny how life takes you in a direction that you're not expecting, and you find your place. You find your, you know, uh, the place where it makes you happy. And yeah, I'm very happy to be in London for sure. Did you guys enjoy the interview? Yeah, it was like that, that last game. I was a bit stunned because like, the word association. I was like, yeah, well, <laughs> definitely in the car with my nieces. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not great at that game, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the, the the mystery questions of the box. Yeah. Derek, thanks so much, first of all, to, you know, to be so kind and sweet when I approached you the first time. You were very kind and also for encouraging uh, Danny to do it because you said that he's a bit shy, camera shy. Yeah, I'm not the best. Yeah, I'm not I'm quite shy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit shy, but he came around. He was a little bit unsure, but I knew he would enjoy it. He actually did it. So. Thank you so much. You are my first couple from Scotland. Oh, Matt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the keys? Where's the keys? I don't see the keys. Where's the keys? The what? The kids. Oh, the, the kids. kids. The kids. Oh, the kids. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Cute. I thought the kids. I thought the kids were like, am I pregnant? No. <laughs> Derek. Before you go, if you guys can share a positive message or something that you live by, who would you like to go first? Um, Just kind of live authentically. Just try and, it's, it's much so difficult to do, but sometimes um, just trying to live is, is what makes you happy. And that, if that's just creating or being with the person that you love or, yeah, be authentic. Amazing. Derek? And find your folks, find your people. Mm. They're there. <laughs> it's really important to have all your friends and family and chosen or otherwise. So you need your people. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for the interview again. It was a great pleasure to connect with you, okay? Thanks for the interview. Keep in touch, okay? Bye. 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 So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website, www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.